Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can take a look at the characteristics of a husband who is narcissistic. So in this video, I'll be focused on a husband and wife relationship, in theory one that is relatively stable, not a new relationship or a relationship that is dissolving, but rather one where there's an expectation that the couple is going to remain together. Now, this of course could apply to any long-term partnership between a man and a woman, whether or not the couple was married. So I'll answer this question by looking at the 10 signs of a husband with narcissistic traits. There are of course a lot of signs. These focus on narcissistic behaviors that would directly be observable by the wife. So to get started here, what is narcissism? Well, I've covered this many times, so I'm just going to give a quick review here. With narcissism, we see self-centeredness, we see a need for admiration, a sense of entitlement, and somebody who's low on agreeableness. Now, there are two types of narcissism, grandiose, also called overt, and vulnerable, also called covert. Somebody can have really mostly grandiose or mostly vulnerable traits, but most narcissists have some characteristics from both types. With grandiose narcissism, we see characteristics like being arrogant, highly self-confident, being resistant to criticism, and being callous. And with vulnerable narcissism, we see characteristics like distrusting other people, feeling insecure, having a lot of resentment, feeling a lot of shame, and being hypersensitive to criticism. Most of the signs that I'll cover here are more related to grandiose narcissism as opposed to vulnerable narcissism. As I go through these signs, when I use the term husband, I'm talking about the husband with narcissistic traits. And when I use the term wife, I'm talking about a wife who is not narcissistic. So sign number one, we see here we have infidelity, and this is kind of wrapped up with fantasy, right? So to the narcissistic husband, the wife is really never good enough, never attractive enough. She's not an ideal partner. He thinks he can do better. He believes he deserves to have a better wife. Again, sense of entitlement. So if you combine this dissatisfaction with the fantasies of success, power, wealth, and the ideal love that we see associated with grandiose narcissism, it's a recipe for an affair. Now, having an affair by itself is actually quite destructive, but with a narcissistic husband, it's really beyond that. He maintains a belief that he has a right to have additional romantic partners. So he's really not doing anything wrong in his mind. So again, here we're seeing that sense of entitlement being quite pronounced. At an extreme level, the husband is offended that the wife could possibly believe that she's good enough to the extent where he would not have to have additional relationships. Sign number two, the husband wants to control his wife's appearance. So the husband wants attention from others and of course has the fantasy of the ideal love that I talked about before. Therefore, he wants the wife to look a certain way, to be exceptionally attractive and appealing, even to other men. One of the common areas where the husband can become demanding is around weight management, usually criticizing an increase in weight more so than a decrease in weight. We see no insight here, no compassion, no recognition that weight management can be very difficult. Rather, we just see criticism, guilt trips, and a general attitude of disgust toward the wife. Interestingly, if the wife suggests that the husband do something to increase his physical attractiveness, like, I'll work on this if you work on that type of a situation, this is offensive to the husband. Moving to sign number three, we see that emotional needs are not attended to. So whenever the wife might be upset about something, no matter how legitimate the feelings are, the husband is not going to be supportive. We see a lack of empathy, which of course is very common with narcissism. We also see an unwillingness to even get involved with the exploration of feelings. Part of this comes from a lack of depth, but also this comes from self-centeredness. If the emotions that the wife is experiencing interfere with something the husband wants, then his behavior might be even more destructive than just simply ignoring the wife and not engaging her in a conversation. He might also go on the offensive. He might criticize her for being weak and emotional. So again, here we really see no true connection. The husband is callous and emotionally distant. Sign number four applies to a marriage or a long-term relationship that involves children. We see with this sign, the husband encourages 
the children to disrespect the wife. So the husband not only tries to manipulate the wife directly, which we'd expect from somebody who's narcissistic, but he also tries to manipulate her indirectly by manipulating the children into disrespecting the wife. So he's really encouraging the children to take sides with him against the wife. Some of this could be just plain envy. He wants the admiration. The kids admire the wife. So for the husband, this means he's not getting as much admiration as he believes he should be getting. Narcissists do not like to share, even if we're talking about a resource that really cannot be depleted. For example, children could admire both a mother and a father. It's not like they use all their admiration up on one and don't have anything left over for the other. Sign number five, we see when choosing activities to do together, the husband really only wants to do things that are enjoyable to him. So the selection of television shows, movies, restaurants, vacation destinations, and even something like choosing which friends to hang out with. There's no give and take. He's always going to have a reason why the wife's selections don't work and why his selections make sense. So in this situation, the wife might find herself really going out and engaging in activities alone. She finds herself going places alone all the time, but when the husband wants to go someplace, she goes with him because he demands that. Again, this is very consistent with narcissism. Moving on to sign number six. The narcissistic husband is extremely jealous of other men. Now, one common behavior we see related to this sign is for the husband to scrutinize the wife's conversations with other men. He really wants to know every detail of what was said and what was meant by what was said, like being interested in the tone of the conversation, the nonverbal communication, hidden messages, and suggestions that may be occurring in that discussion. And typically how this plays out is that the husband keeps on asking until he finds something to latch onto, even if the conversations are really innocuous. So essentially he's just conducting an interrogation, waiting for some sort of slip up, or looking for an opportunity to make a misinterpretation. So when he finds something he can latch on to, he's going to accuse the wife of being interested in another man, spending too much time with another man, or getting too close to another man. The husband is going to provide reasons why he is a better choice as a mate than another man, even though the wife isn't requesting that information. Sometimes this can escalate to where the husband demands that the wife not have any contact with other men, which of course can be very disruptive. It can mean the wife leaves the workforce or abandons other social activities. So there's an isolation component with this particular sign. Now moving on to sign number seven. The husband is envious of the wife's success. So I want to clarify the difference here between envy and jealousy. Envy is defined as an unpleasant, often painful emotion characterized by feelings of inferiority, hostility, and resentment produced by an awareness that another person enjoys a desired possession. Envy is sometimes called the only unpleasant sin. Many people use the word jealousy and envy interchangeably, but we do see a distinction between the two. Jealousy involves a third party and is caused by a fear of losing a possession to a third party. And typically, the narcissist thinks of that possession as a person, specifically his wife. So this is like the behavior I mentioned in sign number six. So the husband is envious of the wife's success across many domains, financial success, even if that financial success helps the narcissistic husband, social success, like when the wife has many friends, career advancement, regardless of financial rewards that are associated with it. So the wife's rank or status in an organization. The husband may suggest that the wife's job title is inflated, so he may try to minimize her accomplishments. So he might say, they call you a manager, who do you manage? Or the husband may make fun of the job titles the wife has. Oh, you're a supervisor, is that what they call the person who sits at a desk and does nothing? Or the husband might say, you're a vice president, isn't that just a glorified secretary? This specific term, glorified secretary, is used quite a bit by narcissists. I've noticed this in my clinical experience when treating victims of narcissists and when treating narcissists. I've also found that the rank is more offensive to the narcissist than the earnings. So if a husband who's narcissistic has a wife that earns more, sometimes he can tolerate that. But if she has higher rank, that's going to be a problem for him anyway. Also, the research literature indicates that somebody with vulnerable narcissism 
is more likely to experience envy than somebody who has grandiose narcissism. Moving on to sign number eight, the narcissistic husband doesn't listen, but expects a lot of attention from the wife, and he also expects his wife to have a perfect memory. So the husband may look like he's listening, but when he responds, the responses are all about him. He only pays attention if the conversation is about something that could benefit him. Interestingly, the narcissistic husband frequently accuses the wife of not listening. If he has to repeat something because the wife doesn't remember or because she didn't listen to it the first time, the husband is offended, but he lacks the insight to realize that he's not listening himself. Sign number nine, the husband downplays the contribution of raising children and or taking care of the household. So for couples that divide up responsibilities where the wife looks after the house and the children, we see that the husband doesn't recognize how much money that saves in childcare, grocery shopping, cleaning, and all the other various activities. So he really downplays that contribution quite a bit. The husband refers to his work as meaningful because he earns money. Again, he doesn't recognize that the wife is actually saving him money. And he uses this as his justification to spend money. At the same time, he criticizes the wife for any spending that she does. So this moves us to sign number 10, the last sign here. The narcissistic husband views the wife as a support person dedicated to him, which is interesting given the content of sign number nine. The narcissistic husband has an expectation that the wife will take care of his wants and needs. He really views this as her job, and she's supposed to do this because he's great, because he's accomplished, and because he's so important. Again, this is how he thinks of it. As part of the sign, we see that he has an expectation of sex, and is offended if the wife is not interested or if she's not feeling well. No reason is good enough for the narcissistic husband. Typically, if this happens a few times, this is when the husband starts to threaten to find a physical relationship somewhere else. So again, we see a good deal of manipulation with this particular sign. The narcissistic husband places a high priority on his wants, but doesn't view the wife's needs, wants, or goals as important. So those are 10 signs of a husband who has narcissistic traits. I know whenever I talk about topics like this, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate a really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found this description of the husband who has narcissistic traits to be interesting. Thanks for watching.